Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux in which we're playing as a French national state. Now I played them before and I did go down the another path that we're not going to go over this path obviously um, uh, but we did get, go with the Order of the French Legion last time but this time we're going to go with something like similar. We're going to go with the Croix de Fieu. I'm meeting with the Colonel. As faithfully arranged by Patan's supporters, the line of Verdun, the respected commander of the Great War, has met with the Francois de la Roque. Or Roque? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Let me know in the comments below. A hero a common sword from the same conflict. But Patan rose first to the position of Fox, right man, ma'am. De la Roque, or Roque, uh, became active in veterans' groups, joining the right wing Croix de Fieu in 1927 and taking it over two years later. The same year that Patan succeeded the, the late Fox as president, since then. De La Roque has greatly expanded his organization from a vaguely nationalistic group for disgruntled old soldiers to a formidable political movement, advocating for corporatist economics. French nationalism and a strong presidency. Perhaps predictably, the Croix de Fieu has so far been glad to support the Junta, gaining the votes of many of the Pétain's sympathizers among the public has been vital in maintaining parliamentary support for the Junta. Although De La Roque now promises that he'll continue to stand by Pétain no matter what, he today suggested to the Marshal that appointing a new cabinet, dominated by members of the Croix de Fieu, with himself as Premier, would go a long way to resolving the crisis. He is indeed correct. With open backing from De La Roque's newspaper, or, uh, Le Flambeau, his paramilitary dispos, and his extensive support base, the Junta will surely be able to move on from the crisis, nevertheless. Some allies are cautioning Patan that granting De La Roque may inf such influence may well lead to the end of the Junta, with De La Roque slowly displacing the Marshal. We have to accept. He'll stay low anyways. We don't need to give him so much power. We must be sure of his backing. Now, we're doing quite a few other focuses here, but you know what? Just in case, we're going to read about... Not that one. De La Roque at the helm. In order to restore support for the presidency for the military, Philippe Patan has appointed Colonel Francois de la Roque, leader of the Croix de Fieu, as his new premier. As de la Roque, despite his military past, is the first civilian premier since 1919. This marks a major step, and according to some, the beginning of the end of the Junta. Either way, de la Roque has a free hand uh, to implement this Catholic and corporatist policies across the nation. West Indies requests outdated plan planes. The government of the West Indies has requested 25 planes from the Great War, as a means of kickstart and air force. Plane production has never really been their priority thus far, but they hope that our help can change it for the better. Sorry, but we have greater pr priorities. Prepare for the liberation. The situation in the continent of Europe is quickly becoming more and more tense, with elections imminent among the coming of traitors, whose relations with the Germans are more intense than ever. There's no point in denying that a conflict even worse than the horrors of the Great Wars around the corner and that conflict will only be the chance we ever get to liberate the Metropole from the cynical tyranny. As such, we must review our military capabilities and seek to resolve debates within the army. The De La Roque, Roque Q Cabinet. Today, Patan appeared before the assembly to give an extensive speech, broadcast to the nation over radio, admitting the failings of the Junta and acknowledging the need for reform. With that in mind, we, he went on to announce the popular right wing nationals, Colonel Francois de la Roque, would be appointed as a new premier, with the cabinet dominated by the colonel's allies in his party and business. There's a significant change in the direction for the Junta as de la Roque, uh, despite his military past, left the army shortly after the war, and thus is the first civilian premier since a Fox coup. Such a major step as a town to many around the world, and although the nature of De La Roque's policies hardly makes this a sign of liberalization, the sun may be setting on the Junta. Good luck, Premier De La Roque. Nice. More stability, get more democracy, complete De La Roque at the helm, um, add other people, and widespread but will just get become a little better, and wow, weekly stability plus 1%. Wow. Remove a simmering descent, thank god. But we went with the, the Darlan plan right now, instead of De La, the De Gaulle plan, because. Well, I wanted something else, and I wanted to focus more on pure infantry than uh, tanks. But Philip Pétain has accepted François Darlan's proposals for military reform, with Darlan having been appointed as a new chief of staff. The French military is now set about implementing Darlan's reform plan, centered around the ideal of as large of an army as circumstances allow, with an integrated command structure that allows for greater cooperation between forces. Military research. Our current research and development capabilities are severely lacking. We need to quickly expand funding for research facilities in order to develop military technology required for a modern army. We can put off resolving this issue for no longer, and it's time to greatly increase funding for the military research. Alright, so like I read that one earlier. Ah. Military cooperation. Cooperation. Defang the assembly. Ooh, that wouldn't be bad either. Uh, I want to do all this stuff, but I want to wait just a little bit first, because I do want to grab... I like a large army. That's nice. But force cooperation. So we get more daily army, naval, and experience gain, which is not much, but it's only 1936. A vital aspect of Admiral Darlan's military reforms is the increased coordination between the Army, Navy, and Air Force in strategy and planning, intending to create a more integrated and cohesive military capable of defeating the Communist forces. Also, Oswald Mosley is very handsome. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but, you know, and we now get 0.8 political power every day, which is not bad. Uh, I want one of these guys to help put down resistance as well. Resistance continues to climb, which is not good. We do also should keep an eye on... Ah, this. Ooh, put down. Oh, look at this guy. Ryan's wall. Look at Colonel. Stability factor. Political power gain plus 10%. Not bad. 
Well, Badang gives us he's a line of Verdun too. So, um, occupation because this is what happened last time. Uh, after we changed factions, we lost a lot of support here. So now resistance is very high. Unfortunately, we need a lot of guns. Unfortunately. It's going to be pretty painful. But Jacques Bainville. Um, I think I read this one last time, maybe. So if you're about this guy, please go right ahead. On Grand Homme. A great man. For his cooperation. The most peculiar training incident. Uh, ah. And we'll talk about this in another two right now. As the armed forces continue to prepare their themselves tirelessly for the coming liberation, there's been a massive increase in training related incidents. Well, such a thing is to be expected. Most end at worst with a broken rifle or a broken number two. A few of these have resulted in a few deaths, but those are fair and far between. Of all the various incidents that take place over the past few weeks, there's one that can simply take cake. What started as a simple trick of practice, the mighty Democrat's main gunner miscalculated his shot and ended by shelling a small village immediately. Upon realizing the mistake, the crew disembarked and went to survey the damage for the incident reports. Most of the crews expected to find a massacre or bloodbath, but that's not the case. Due to nothing short of divine intervention, not a single soul was lost, and most of the shots fired actually hit meters away, far outside of the small village. With one exception, in the heart of the village's market, there's a single impact site. The impact site was what appeared to be the charred remains of a bear and a rooster who appeared to be fighting over a book. One question about this is the most strange of scenes the villager could also offer very little. Claiming that the bear and the rooster turned up out of nowhere a few weeks prior, the villagers said that the animals never interacted with his people. Saying to themselves, occasionally the two would get into a minor scuffle. As for the book, the two were fighting over. While most of it was turned to ash, what remained seemed to be a history of France, just until after the exile. Why these two animals were fighting over a book of history will never be known. As for the Democratie itself, its guns and gunners shall be recalibrated and retained to prevent any more such accidents in the future. Bears and roosters fighting? This is the, what, is, what is this world coming to? Now, I do want to do all this stuff to get more daily army XP, and, which is not bad, or just daily military XP. Uh, French National Workers Day, you get more bonus over them. I also like this one too. Four civilian factories is pretty strong. I like that one too. Industrialized colonies. Our current in industry can never hope to sustain a military campaign across the metropole. If we have any hope, of course, of liberating our brothers and sisters, we must rectify this dire situation and seek to encourage a far greater level of industrial growth across the colonies. Subsidies for new construction projects in both the Maghreb and Sub Saharan territories will, be to, will begin to get our industrial capacity back on track. So that one's very good to do. The Trans Saharan Railway, I want to do as well, but it just costs extra stuff even though we get more resources. It costs 5% more uh, consumer goods. And we lose political power, which is not great. Uh, but the faster you do it, the faster you get it done. So that's also that idea, too. But I don't, definitely want to industrialize as fast as possible, too. Uh, this stuff's not bad. Uh, weekly manpower would be good, too. Military cooperation. Uh, Dilla Rocu is the first civilian to be appointed premier since the coup in 1919. And understandably, many officers are concerned that their political influence will come to an end. It's crucial that we assuage these fears by meeting the prominent generals and explain our shared values and goals. Offering them government posts and reassuring them of our good the rebellion will die. The natives will die armed and organized for weeks as a result of our colonial policies. They have now have assembled a strong enough force to declare independence and to declare open revolt against the rule. Which is down there, which sucks. To arms. Uh, due to our limited resources, we're only able to suppress this revolt once. Which really, really sucks. Because we have no manpower. Because we have no guns. Because we don't have very much here. You know what? I wanted to make more of an army. But, uh, you know what? Screw it. Screw these guys. Hey, 2,000 manpower is pretty nice. We can get that stuff back eventually. But it's going to kind of suck for a while. We need more guns, we need more empire. We don't have enough of anything here. Um, so, uh, defending the assembly, we need uh, this one. I want to get the weekly manpower at the very least. And get better resistance to case which is 2 2. Great 2. The Dispos has served as paramilitary and security service for the Crow de Few for years now. Asserting the party's presence on the streets and protecting our members. Without devolving into the same bonds and illegality as the AFs, Camelots, and other organizations. To protect the government and secure a position, we should further promote membership of the Dispos among young men and empower them to act against our rivals. Which seems like a good idea. Um, that's not bad too. Where else is with uh, putting down resistance and whatnot? I really want to do. And getting more stability of course would be very good as well. Um, Bohemia. A meeting with Darlan. Over the past few months, acceptance of Francois Darlan's proposals for military reform has propelled him to a position of great influence within Petain's clique and, by extension, within the government, as such its vital secures loyalty. Uh, with this in mind, De La Roque, today met the Admiral, the, his fellow Great War veteran, whose rapid rise with the French Navy during the 20s and 30s and involvement with Petain has caused him to develop nationalistic and anti parliamentarian ideas shared by De La Roque. The two men were able to find much common ground, and Darlan has agreed to support the civilization of the Junta under the Croix de Fieu. In exchange for greater investment in the army and greater autonomy for the general staff, we would be nothing without the heroes of the military. Nice, and they should have slightly more with political power. As much as I want this stuff here, the more daily army XP and whatnot, uh, I want to go with uh, early mobilization. Also, we have the IEDCs, which is why we had such little political power and whatnot, so keep building, building, building. It needs to look better. Compliance is, well, pretty much stagnant. 
That's going down, which is good. It's all going down resistance, well. That's still pretty bad right there, but whatever. Human is meh integral. I think of this one too before as well. A new type of integralism, huh? I don't know about this. Please go. Right ahead. Cool. Because we can use more map. Oh, we can really. More oh, we can't get more map. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. I'd like to do all stuff too, but. Early mobilization. It might give us more a military fact, more factories to work with. It'll speed up how fast we can do everything else as well. And get slightly more fuel, so that's actually really good too. We got 5% more consumer goods. A building uh, construction speed for factories increased by 20%. More cap which, for the divisions, which doesn't really matter. Fuel gain went up by 15%, and we have more fuel capacity. So, defending the assembly. Parliamentary weakness and bickering has been a thorn in the side of the Republic for long enough. It was a division and chaos of the Parliamentary Republic, or government, that doomed us to the Great War and Revolution. It would be a madness to suggest that the Fox coup in 1919 was nothing but justified. As such, we must finally put a stop to the parliamentarianism that divides us even today. Concentrating power on the President, Premier, and Cabinet. Should be better, would be bad either. Le Flambeau. Oh. Um, I'll take Entente Trade Deals. Oh, another. Oh, get, rushing through this would be really good. The chaos of the revolution in exile left us with a precious few uh, uh, allies compared to the vast coalition that challenged Germany during the Great War. However, we must consolidate our ties with those allies uh, that we do have and reach out to our fellow Entente nations for increased economic cooperation with mutually beneficial trade deals and investment alongside a fresh effort to attract investment from these countries, the Colonel's Coalition. Having been appointed premier by Marshal Patton uh, to restore confidence in the regime and rebuild a popular support, well, Francois de la Roque now needs to find political allies, if he's have any chance of consolidating power himself. As such, he announced today on the steps of the assembly that he and his cabinet would work towards forming a new government of national unity, intended to bridge political divides and reunite the nation, alongside an anti-corruption push. It is expected that this initiative will be supported by Pétain's other allies in parliament, such as Louis Marine's Federation Republicaine, and many have pinned their hopes for a restoration of order and unity onto de la Roque. President Pétain, as well said, is as well as said to have had high hopes for his new premier, although some of his loyalists were that De La Roque's power and popularity is eclipsing Patan's own, and his political maneuverings lack presidential oversight. We'll need to find allies with the Ulema. I think of this one before as well. Either way, they're probably trouble. If you want to know about this, please go ahead as well. Bingo bongo. Uh, oh, it's going back up. God dang it, are you freaking kidding me? Point eight three is not bad, but still. I'll get there. But we recruit ahead of intelligence too. Uh, Marin joins the unity government. After many smaller nationals and conservative parties and independence pleasure support of De La Roque's unity government, today Louis Martin, Marin, leader of uh, the conservative and Catholic but avowedly Republican Federation, Federation Republicaine, did the same assuring De La Roque of the support of his party, although Marin himself hopes to amass influence for himself in his party than De La Roque's government. Many predict that his alliance with the Croix de Fieu will simply see this movement absorb an eclipse. Only time will tell. Offland elected, huh? Well, we're trying, we were trying to import at least a little bit of fuel from, like, someplace here. Um, Thunder's Bologna. Yeah, that's in the Reich's Pact. Portuguese Empire, Dutch East Indies. There we go. Defending the Assembly. The uh, Special Premier Powers Act. Uh, the Larocque's unity government, having absorbed the smaller right-wing parties, the Federation Republic came, and made other delegates from the Alliance, Democratique, where there was little opposition today when he passed through the Assembly a new Special Premier, uh, Premierial Powers Act. The act depends on the state of emergency declared by the Falk in 1919, giving the Premier special powers to enforce the state of emergency and to maintain order. In practice, this is con concentrated extraordinary power in De La Roque, and it's clearly him, not Pitan or anyone else, who is in control. The nation only waits to see what he'll do with his newfound control over the state. We can trust the colonel. Remove widespread protests. Ah, I love it. 40%, nice. We have over one political power a day, as we're going to go to partial mobilization. Hey, good, it's going down a little bit more. That's good, that's good. Uh, we can use a little more compliance, but still, whatever. Guns are looking a little better now, which is good. It's, it's 1960. 1916? No, 1936. Uh, I could probably use better light tanks, but I want to get a mediums quickly. Oh, we can't really support that. We, we, yeah, we have a couple of light tanks. We don't really want to bother them too much. Armor trains probably don't really need that, honestly, either. But we'll get it anyways, because we can. Um, planes would be good. Armor plates and whatnot. I never really got armor plates before. Um, engineering industry. Let's grab some synthetic stuff. We could probably honestly use that, too. Um... Uh, 150. We'll probably go grab one of these next. 
Uh, if you want to buy this one, please go right ahead. Well, I've read this one before as well, so. Malton trade deals. Maghrebi shipbuilding. Without a strong and well-equipped navy, we have no hope of liberating France. As such, we battle these ships. With this in mind, the government needs subsidies or needs to subsidize shipbuilding on the Med coastline of North Africa and for its further naval research. So we can get to this one, National Rearmament Program, you get four military factories which we desperately need, and we get a research slot, which is super important. Our need for military industry is greater than ever, and as such is now vital that we redouble our effort investments in armed factories and subsidies for armaments, encouraging both private business and state interest to do their bit for the military economy, introducing greater rationing in order to save resources, resources for the military. This one is not bad, but we can wait for that one. This one's okay. 42 days for a few planes, which is okay, and a military factory, it's all right. Anti-Semitism in the Croix de la Few. Or Cro I keep saying Croix de la Few, but Croix de Few. As the Croix de Few expands, we must address the question of anti-Semitism among the party membership. Although de la Croix Q has condemned anti-Semitism in the past and has a good relation with the chief rabbi Jacob Kaplan, it has also been known to be condemned Jewish immigration into the African territories and opposed the settlement in Algeria or of Jewish refugees. Meanwhile, the Croix de Few, as a nationalist mass movement, has inevitably attracted many members with anti-Semitic dispositions, and as such, party members are growing increasingly divided on the matter of anti-Semitism. De La Roque is thus being urged on by many moderates to condemn anti-Semitism again, although others believe that this would hinder our efforts to absorb former Action Francois members. Don't upset the radical right. We need to take a stance against these un-French sentiments. Well, we get more paternal autocracy, and we get more political power that way. So... We can expand that. We need more manpower, but... Oh, Francois Darlan. Over here, um, I really want... Probably to go... We get bonus for for grand battle plan, don't we? Traffic and speed. We don't. We need attack. We need a lot of attack. But I I, I love. I've always loved getting better at supply consumption and organization. I've always felt that was probably the strongest. Well, guns and butter. Um. So with this one, we did get to redu cost reductions for grand battle plan twice. But we don't have to go that way. Weekly war spread out. Seems really nice. A large army. Seems like a grand thing to do. Citizen soldier ideal. Broad offensive sounds very grand as well. You know what? I think for this one, maybe we'll go with grand battle plan then. As much as I want to do for superior firepower. Wait, where am I supposed to get bonuses? We were supposed to get bonuses. Well, you know what? Screw it, we're gonna do it anyways. Grand battle plan it is. Eat out of the going to do with that, please go ahead. Just because, I don't know, we'll have to choose different routes. I almost gonna do mass assault, so. Uh, plus 50 weekly manpower, oh, so much. So we'll do that one, and then strike it, hidden socialism, and get more political power technically, Mother's Day. 10 years ago, the government instituted a heavy-handed NATO's policy, which among many other measures, included the creation of a special celebration for Mother's Day, and a medal of the French uh, family, awarded to good mothers of numerous families. Though the results of these policies are only just starting to be felt, Mother's Day has been caught on as a truly popular celebration. It is now widely celebrated in schools and homes across the nation. To the delight of mothers everywhere, it has become customary for children to bring home little gifts for their mothers, and for husbands to make sure it's a special day for wives and, of course, for their own mothers. In a speech broadcast on the radio today, Philip Patan reminded the women that only you can give to future generations the taste of honest work, the sense of discipline, the modesty of respect which makes healthy men in a strong nation. You are the source of our Christian civilization and our greatest hope for the future, ensuring that the incredibly important role of women in society is reminded to all and given the respect it deserves. Bon fete ma maman. I butchered that, I know. Align patriotic industrialists. Right wing in business, the men socially conscious and nationalistic have long been crucial supporters of the Croix de Few. Their funds working magic for the party's continued success. We should reward these good men, and with government positions and contracts, and thus further incentivize other wealthy businessmen to join the ranks. Boom! Today, Charles Trent, a famous and well accomplished singer songwriter. Oh, I think I read this one before as well. A singer singing soldier, who ever heard of such nonsense? If you read this, please go ahead. And we'll also read what else. I do want to be on through all the stuff on the left side, even though this stuff is pretty good as well. Um, I do like this one a lot. This stuff is important too. But it can be slightly ignored for now. This stuff, not so much, because uh, we actually maybe we can. Yeah, maybe we can't ignore that. Triumphant has finally liberated France. Well, we'll get back to there. So we're going to do that one. Bolster the mass movement. Weekly stability does go up. That's really strong, too. Quite a few has come a long way from its originators or origins as a veterans association, and since being reformed into a political party in 1933, has gained a mass membership unprecedented for French parties, with its own newspapers, security services, and youth groups. If they are accused of regimes of prosper, we must further emphasize the party's populist appeal and incentivize membership as a requirement for government positions and contracts. 
struck at hidden socialism for years now. De La Roquillo has warned the nation of hidden socialism, of a nefarious enemy with him. Now that we're in power, we can finally begin investigating and stamping out socialism and communist infiltration. The Doeme do 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 Bureau, a long-standing bastion of anti-socialism, we give an extended power to detect and fight socialism investigating opposition politicians and others who remain skeptical the of enemy the government. For years now, the Croix de Fio has launched staunchly opposed influences of hidden socialism, claiming the existence of a vast socialist conspiracy against the French nation and its leaders, and arguing that Marshall's government has been infiltrated and betrayed by communist sympathizers. Now, on the back of the Special Premieral Powers Act, Colonel de la Roque today pushed that through the Assembly, with the support of a clear majority of the Special Counter-Socialist Measures Act, giving the government and do et me a uh, bureau of extensive powers investigating crush syndicalist infiltration. With the valiant officers of the law already setting to work to crack down on the social spies and their Arab nationalist puppets, so the nation will be made secure in no time. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to be doing that because we can spend some political power. Because we get some com or command power because we're spending that command power. So there goes American uh, Civil War. They're going to have a good old time. We're going to go with Expert here. And we're going to go with Bender. The Radical uh, Exposed. Tell you, sh oh, shocking truth came to light. Thanks to the determined work of the Do Do Me Bureau, the Partei Radical, supposedly a safe and well-intentioned Republican Party, has been thoroughly infiltrated by communist agents ever since it, our exile, or the exile. So it's been well known the party has spun under the tide of the revolution, or the tide of the revolution, with its left wing staying on the commune, but what has been kept hidden up till now is the party leadership has maintained contracts with their former colleagues in the metropole ever since. Security implications are this, of course, horrendous, and the Paul's leadership is being rounded up in question with both Camille Chamtems and Edouard Daladier already being behind bars, and the party soon to be dismissed. I seek to pick up the pieces of the shocking revelation. We can only hope that the co conspirators are soon found and dealt with. Ban this insidious party. Because we have such lacking manpower, I don't even want to send divisions. I'll send, like, planes maybe, but, like, that's it. Can we not send? Oh. Uh, if you're in La Montpiaf, please go right ahead. You'll hear they'll perform live someday. Oh, well, I guess we could send that, and they'll still allow that, but, uh... Or maybe not. Maybe not. Very extensive. We need it. Let's do that. Align patriotic stuff. Bolster the mass movement. Dealing with Action Francois. How's we continue to investigate? The communist art infiltration, the plot is only thickened, and it appears that the right has been thoroughly manipulated as well as the left. Georges Valois and the Cirque Cercel Proudhon were close to the Action Francois and the Charles Maras himself. Before the revolution, it appears that they never really fell out, uh, with many AF men found to have maintained contact with the members of Valois' Sorelian movement in the communion, allowing sensitive information to reach the Reds in Paris. Maras, Pujol, and other prominent AF politicians have been rounded up by the police, and the party's membership is outraged at their leader's treachery and will likely not turn the Croix de Feud itself as a true party of French nationalism. I want these traitors behind bars. As they should be placed there. Nope. I don't want to hurt our stability. It's already not that high. Okay, so why can't we send volunteers? Or we have volunteers, but like we can't do anything about it. What even is this division? 14? They have some tanks. It's not that good. Yeah, let's go. Guns are looking better, though. Minimum wage, bolster the mass movement. So, obviously, we want to do this one too. Uh, Republic Social? Well, the Croix de Few is stronger than ever, and again, gained the support of much of the establishment. Uh, de la Roque can finally reform the failed Third Republic into new Republic Social Francois, creating a new French constitution along Catholic and corporatist lines, with the support of the assembly and military. Under the colonel's guidance, France shall prosper, prosper like never before. The whole truth. As politicians and uh, parties across the political spectrum have been investigated and exposed for their connections to the commune, it has become clear, of course, that some malicious individuals have, must have coordinated and covered up these efforts. Given how long this coordination or infiltration has gone on for, such individuals can only be exceptionally high in the government. As such, countless long standing aides and advisors of Philip Pétain have been rounded up and are currently under investigation as we seek to find the commune or agents among them. In practice, this has left Pétain cut off from many of his own normal loyalists. The Marshal's public appearances have likely largely lately declined, declined anyways, and with De La Roque having forged his own alliances with the army and in control of the assembly, many now wonder how much power Pétain really has. De La Roque will save the nation from these saboteurs. Um, motorized guy. You also probably want some of this stuff. It's going to cast a little more, but that's okay. Oh, they can pierce us. That's good. 
Anything up and up for now. Uh, yeah, well, look at that guy too. But right now we are you know, autocrats, and we're probably most closely aligned with this guy. Yeah. Twenty after, uh, anniversary of Our Lady of Fatima. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Weird. Our friends in business. Throughout the code of Fuse history, the party has been supported by many, many, many uh, patriotic and right leaning businessmen. In its early days, the party depended entirely on financial support from the successful perfume Francois Cote. De La Roque has always maintained good relations with the business community since, and Cote for his part has already been rewarded for the post of Minister of Finance. However, De La Roque has many backers beyond Cote himself, and they all want something in return for the donations to the port. De La Roque is, of course, grateful for the contributions. As eager to pay them somehow, but many of his advisors, and the remaining military men of the government, believe that bringing loyal businessmen into the government en masse would likely be seen as corrupt. Their loyalty will be essential. Reward them with government positions. We don't want them to see as corrupt as favor them for contracts. I like that one the most. Can we spend the political power at all? Uh, let's go to the head of intelligence first, and then... We don't want to be seen as corrupt. And we'll do this one too. Le Flambeau. Catholic State Unions. A minimum wage. Despite our good relations with business, we must never forget or ignore the struggles and sacrifices made by ordinary French workers. The working class makes up a substantial portion of our membership, and any good government has a duty, albeit a long one neglected by the Republican establishment, to provide for the common man, and as such. We should establish a fair and just minimum wage for all French workers, something which our corporate allies can quickly, easily, quickly afford. Um, yeah, we could probably do the Trans-Saharan Railway too. The German takeover of Morocco uh, has left our remaining West African colonies cut off from Algiers by the Sahara. Because of an inefficient administration, and if we are invaded, it will lead to severe supply issues for our soldiers. Particularly if we can no longer safely travel around the coast. As such, we must begin the construction of a new railway across the desert. How are we doing up here? Doing alright? Getting more army XP? Charles Gaulle is learning a lot? As he should. Uh, news from Corsica. Oh. Uh, this morning, a war memorial just. Uh, continuing so up from the mainland was inaugurated on a beach in Ajaccio. It was dedicated to the tens of thousands of Corsicans who gave their lives for France during the Valkyrie and subsequent civil war since the revolution. The well, island has been an incredibly important bastion for us. Indeed, it's so close to the economy that its shores that can be seen in a clear day. Or well, right, Italy is not far away either. As such, it's become a focal point for the Mediterranean strategy of the Entente, having quickly been transformed into a major naval and air base from which our ships patrol as close as possible to the mainland, with thence faced us with international ships occurring every other week. Any liberation effort. Where to start here? And much of the intelligence and reconnaissance work done in France and Italy is coordinated with from Bastia and Ajaccio. And it's, it's also there that the first waves of exiles landed, and though most moved on to Algeria, many stayed, creating a population and economic boost that paired with the military buildup as revitalized the island despite per, uh, perpetual tension as war looms. Though there's no longer a stream of refugees like in the day, early days of the commune, there's still a constant trickle of dissidents, making their way to our shores, each given a hero's welcome while carefully interrogated. Finally, organized crime, already an issue before the war, has become a mainstay of island life. Many destitute veterans and refugees turned to crime. The presence of so many soldiers made gambling and prostitution booming businesses. And the Corsican Mafia, under the leadership of men like Paul the Emperor Carbon, himself a veteran, further thrived on the smuggling of goods and people in and out of the metropole. The authorities, though, turned a blind eye to this as the Mafia has proved to be an incredibly useful network of informants within the commune, all the while attaining to the base of needs of instrumen and officers alike. What a lovely little island. It's for the Carlists. Support the legitimate government. The only way for Spain to achieve true peace and democracy through the true government of the Bourbons prevailing. The Carlos are like past Spain has become made righteous once more. The Portuguese have convinced us that it's the right faction to back and surely if we support them and the join of Alonso here they succeed. Uh, do I support the kingdom or do I support the Carlists? We have a higher opinion of them. And they're put in autocrats across so Spain is, is well, the winner. Let me send one. Maybe I'll actually well, I will send one. Um, they're 12 combo, which is okay. Infantry is 18, which is a little better. And we do have a little bit of manpower to spend now. And we still have no fuel, but whatever. Incentivizing party membership. As the government seeks to bolster membership from uh, the Croix de Few, it would be essential to ensure that the party membership is common among self-servants. Uh, and other government employees. 
All proposals to encourage membership is to give party members subtle pay raises, and to make the practices an open secret, inspiring people to join. On the other hand, it has been suggested that party members could be favored for promotions and for the governmental jobs in the first place. Meanwhile, it could also simply make membership a legal requirement, those who would likely cause some controversy. Increase the salary of known members? Give members better opportunities for promotion and employment. Make members uh, mandatory. I like that one, especially since this bill is going to go up anyways eventually, so. So. Annual eye deck review. Commando. Best 50. It's a lot, I know. Is this the economy? Yeah, just help with the economy. It gets it gets more factory output too. Why is it so freaking high here? Well, Madrid. Colonial reforms, not bad. But if we have these guys, I do want to make sure we have enough artillery and engineers. We don't have enough of anything here. We really don't. Yeah, that's a training, 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 training. Um, sold on to Madrid for now, really. Do the best we can. Good, good, and logistics. Good player. And go with you. Both of the mass movement. Might make you restored. Go with go with arms. We're gonna keep going with arms. Oh, this one next too. Because right now we have 15. We should keep building up some civvies too for now. We're building up a lot of infrastructure, but guns and whatnot are nice too. As long as you just hold a line, that's all that really matters to me. It's learning a lot. It's good. It's very good. Um here. Good. Minimum wage, Catholic state unions. The free market capitalism of previous, uh, previous governments was a device of an unsustainable system, and only that the working class was a much uh, justified resentment, which was taken advantage of by the socialists interrupted in a revolution. We must take care to never let such a resentment uh, to build up again. As such, uh, the state will assume control of the remaining trade unions and reorganize them into a Catholic organizations which can represent workers on company boards and ensure just treatment and also promoting faith and patriotism among women members. Um... I think I read this one before as well. Louis Bellarial dies. I'm going to put that. Please go ahead. But, ensuring corporatism. Cano de la Roque, with the backing of all the remains of the assembly. And the acceptance of the increasingly isolated Marshall has now committed to creating a new constitution for the French nation. To better organize it for the liberation beyond. The first step in establishing the new legal framework for the colonial state has, to the surprise of few, been the official establishment of a corporatist system of government. The first part of the constitution to be agreed on and ratified by the government has established a system of collective management of businesses, with the unions controlled by the state and the representation of unions and government officials on company boards, to ensure fa fair or fa and collective management of industry. This will ensure us better stability better than any market revolution. Offense. Because we're going to need to be offensive. So that way is good. Uh, that's what I do. Oh boy. Just don't lose Madrid. Or anything really. Just don't lose. That goes up here too. God dang, they are just wanting to beat the Schneckies out of us, don't they? Are this other mountains or what? Catholic State Unions, Le Flambeau. So it's been a newspaper of us, of course. Uh, of the Croix de Few. It's popular among our membership. However, propaganda is of little use when read only by those who are supporting us. As such, uh, we should invest more heavily in the Le Flambeau. Expanding its journalistic staff, increasing its circulation to ensure a message reaches the whole population. The presidential state. As drafting of the agreed upon system of the government, well, to, well, that will enshrine a Catholic and presidential republic. Ever since Falk took over the government in 1919, the Republic has been governmental power concentrated in the presidency. But so far, Patan has had to operate through unofficial or pseudo-legal means. However, some wonder, of course, if you ever make use of these new new sense of powers, the old Marshal's public appearances have grown more and more infrequent, and he seems to have little to no influence on the drafting of what is widely being called the Colonel's Constitution. Only strong leadership can, of course, save France. Uh, we'll go, we'll go, keep going for now. Now, with, uh, I guess we're having the Royal Tour as well. Tour? Tour. 
the Royal Tour. Oh, we lost it. So good. So thirty-seven. Get to that one. Get more fuel. My God, we're gonna need more fuel. Nice. Uh, oh, George. Oh, what the heck? It's a rest. Oh crap! They're going total is an insane death of our leader, a social republic, an Arab wing. As we seek to further expand the mass party of the Croix de Few, a proposal was reached to General Roque that we create a new wing of the party to represent the Arab population in Algeria, especially as we attack the Action Francois. We are in sympathy among the natives, as we only and we only tie in the taxation and conscription of Algerians in anticipation of the liberation. Many believe it would be politically expedient to win their loyalty, though others argue it would be a waste of funds and practically a large futile. We need support. Go ahead. Yeah. A social republic. Today, by the unanimous vote of the Assembly, the new constitution of the newly christened Republique Sociale Francois was signed into law by President Pétain. The constitution formally adopts a conservative, Catholic, and corporatist agenda of the Croix de Few, creating a presidential corporate state. But, far from strengthening the current president, this constitution has finally brought this political career to an end. After ratifying the constitution, Marshal Pétain confirmed that he was retired from political and military life to the unanimous applause and gratitude of the Assembly. It had been no secret that De La Rocu had gradually stripped away Pétain's influence since becoming premier, but the retirement of the man who dominated French politics since 1929 has still come. I was a surprise to many, though most of the population hoped that the fresh leadership will strengthen the country, of course. Uh, Francois De La Rocu will soon declare Pétain's successor as president, and in a long, successful speech, vowed to do his utmost to liberate France. Adieu Pétain and bienvenue De La Rocu. French, just, oh, social, I like the skull. Look at this handsome, he's got a big old forehead. That's okay. Uh, votes for women. What? Weekly spirit goes up even more. Restore the place of the church. Bridge a class divide. Not bad, too. Um, we'll do this one, too. Fils et filles. The fils et filles. The croix de fils. The youth wing of a party. Teaching the children of loyal members to exercise hard work and faith. Our government will be greatly strengthened in the long term if we expand this organization so strongly. Uh, encourage government officials, whatever their personal sympathies, to enroll the children in the movement and to greatly increase the organization's funding. Murder rocks the casper. If you wonder about this, please go ahead. Um... Clearly, the murderer was just trying to shift the blame. Uh, we can't let him roam free. Keep him in jail. Don't let him roam free. So we're going to do that one. I read that one before as well. Uh, we're in the church in place. Some of this stuff is really not bad. Not bad either. Uh, five years are still so nice. Uh, 1937, Cote's complaints over the past few months. So, several wealthy businessmen have largely been greatly disappointed by the government's refusal to give them overly favorable treatment, despite their support of the Croix de Few. Although Francois Cote has continued to do well, or remains influential in his post as Prime Minister, or uh, uh, Finance Minister, he has grown frustrated by the treatment of his fellow businessmen and political allies, and is now demanding greater concessions of big business. While many De La Roque's allies believe that we should accept Cote's demands without guaranteeing as many concessions as he might have wanted earlier, but others argue that continuing to reject his and his allies' advances, we can finally break free from the influence of big business. Keep them happy. The state did not serve to ex exist to serve only the wealthy. Uh, bridge class divide. Class divisions and equality had crippled our nation for too long, leaving hard-working um, workers embittered against France and vulnerable to leftist subversion, while their elites grow ruthless, ruthless and complacent. The time for such a disastrous state affairs is no more, and through worker representation, company boards, and state oversight of the market, a new era of class collaboration can set in, in which every man knows and accepts his place and his purpose. King Edward's ad address. Well, we're going to put that place right at the Entente Center ready. Marin retires. Today, in a large, lengthy speech by the Assembly, Louis Marin, leader of the Federation Republican, announced his full return from the public life. Marin has had a long and successful career, leading the Conservatives FR for many years and loyally supporting, loyal supporting both the Junta and El De La Roque. However, under De La Roque's government, he's seen much of the influence taken away from him, and support largely absorbed by the Croix de Few, inspiring him to retire to reduce further tensions within the government. Nevertheless, Marin announced his full confidence in Colonel De La Roque and thanked the government for all its service. We shall miss all miss his dedication to France. Sure we will. Sure. Uh, I still want to use a lot of cast. Um, I just want to defend, man. That's all I want. I want our guys to learn as much as possible. Even though we might get pushed back here and there, but whatever. They'll get attacked here next, but yeah, just keep defending as much as you can. Oh god, support commitment and motorize. Uh, how are we looking? Guns looking okay. We, need, we will need way more guns, though. Truth be told. Yeah, we'll stop. We're going to do that one. Yeah, this one's next. We get more weekly stability, more political power. All that stuff is super, super good. And transfer in railway. Colonel, 
Colonial Extraction is very good too. Promoting Le Flambeau. Le Flambeau has been the official newspaper of the Croix de Fieu for several years now, loyal supporting the message of the Colonel de la Cube. However, it is of course only read by our loyal supporters, so it currently serves little use as a propaganda outlet. With this in mind, though, uh, uh, two different solutions have been proposed to bolster the paper circulation. First, we could use government funding to drive down its price, making it too cheap for independent newspapers to compete with. On the other hand, we could subsidize shops with sell paper and promote it in their own ways. Drive down the price with government money, give the shops subsidies for selling it. What did they do with Patan? Over a month has passed since Patan, having seen his political influence slowly swept away from under his feet, resigned in the presidency to make way for De La Roque. The Marshal has stayed on his military post since then, but has now informed the government of his intention to also retire from military life, though he hopes to continue his career in some form. We can keep him busy by giving him a diplomatic posting or make him a parliamentarian, a larger ceremonial role since the new constitution concentrated power in the presidency. On the other hand, some believe it would be more advantageous if uh, potentially retired. Who finds a senator? Ambassador in Ottawa. Just retire him fully, probably. Honestly, that's probably for the best. Um, as much as we want him here. Not really, but yeah, whatever. Um, Juro? Cool. And we'll get you, and you can be an offensive guy. Because we like being offensive. But I think we're going to end it there. Um, we'll do this one, this one, this one off screen. Or throw the place of church and state. It's not bad, but we have a lot of other stuff to do. And we're going to do this last one. Ever since 1905, the Republicans had no organized ties with the Catholic Church, and Catholicism in France has become under attack from Republican elites. Although the conservative policies of Patan's government did do some way to restoring morality, such much work remains to be done, and it is De La Roque, champion of the Catholic middle class, who will do it. It's time to reach out to the Holy See and sign a new concordat with the Church. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and see you tomorrow as we'll see what we can do with the French Social Republic, and hopefully reclaim mainland France. Thanks for watching, have a great, tremendous... What a trust of your day.